Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon, and thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to be part of today's discussion on women of influence. I'd like to share some thoughts with you on the lessons I have learned during my career in banking, which is quite male-dominated industry, especially at the senior level, to the qualities that I think women need to demonstrate in order to break through in the world of finance, and three, how we can build a more diverse and inclusive workplace that will be fairer at the same time as being an asset to employers and why it is critical. So I'll start with my own story. I grew up in Hong Kong, completed my university education overseas, and then returned to Hong Kong to start my career. After working in marketing and customer relations with a number of large multi, uh, multinational organizations, I joined HSBC in 1999. The bank's long and distinctive heritage, this year marks our 150th anniversary, and our global presence makes it quite a cosmopolitan and diverse workplace. But it is also no secret that senior management in the banking industry has traditionally had a somewhat male and Anglo-Saxon character. I should be clear, this has not been a barrier to women or non-Anglo-Saxons in rising through the ranks in our industry, including at HSBC. Indeed, my own career path and those of several other female senior executives in banking are proof that women can attain senior positions in Hong Kong, even in traditionally male-dominated sectors such as finance. But I have found that women often have to go further to get their viewpoints heard. In practice, that means we need to be more, more convincing in our articulation, more prepared with research and data when it comes to promoting a concept or an agenda, and willing to spend more time canvassing and consulting stakeholders to convince them of our ideas and proposals. Of course, as all the women here know, we have to do all this while striking a very delicate balance. As leaders and people of influence, we need to be vocal and visible without being branded as difficult. This is a tough balance for any manager to strike, men included. But I think it can be especially difficult for women, and even, for, and even more so for women in Asia, where women are often expected to be particularly polite and perhaps self-effacing. Of course, it is not easy to change long-held social mindsets. Women in Hong Kong may have more opportunities than those in many other Asian countries, but they're still expected to balance their work life with looking after their spouse, their children, their parents, and their in-laws at times. Sadly, it is still too common for capable women to pull back from their career trajectories and not progress as much as they could have because they were concerned that they would not be able to give as much energy, time, and effort as needed for the path ahead. I think we would all agree that this has to change. And I'm pleased to say that I do see it changing all the time, especially here in Hong Kong. When it comes to gender parity, Hong Kong is one of the most equal societies in Asia. We've made a lot of progress over the past few decades. Women account for about half of university enrollments. The female proportion of Hong Kong's labor force is far higher than it once was and women are well represented in the civil service. Women have also forged ahead in creating and running businesses in Hong Kong. Nearly half of entrepreneurs in Hong Kong are female, according to the new research from HSBC Private Bank. <laughs> this compares with 36% in Singapore, 21% in Germany, and 27% in the UK. But we can go so much further. Women hold just 11.1% of directorships in Hong Kong's top companies, according to a report by Community Business, an NGO. Only 11 of the LegCo members, of the LegCo 70 members, are women. All the judges of the Court of Final Appeal are men. 
actually quite a number of gentlemen here today. <laughs> and median wages for women are significantly below those for men, in part because many do not stay in the workforce long enough to advance to well-paid senior positions. We need more women to stay in the workforce, but we also need more women to advance all the way to the C-suite. This is not just about fairness, it also makes good economic sense. And it requires input from companies, society, and from women ourselves. As I mentioned, there is growing realization that enabling women to participate more fully in the workforce is crucial for a society like Hong Kong, which is aging rapidly. Just recently, both McKinsey and the Asian Development Bank have published research showing that more gender equality in the workforce could substantially boost economic output around the globe. McKinsey's research showed that advancing gender diversity in the workforce could add as much as 12 trillion US dollars to, globe GD to global GDP in 2025. So it should surprise no one that a better gender balance in the workforce and in companies' management teams will deliver real benefits to the economy and the corporate sector's bottom line. Intuitively, I think we all know that a broader range of perspectives in the boardroom and a closer affinity with the full spectrum of a company's customer base are going to be assets for any enterprise. So how can we or how can companies in Hong Kong make the most of the women in their workforce and create a better pathway for them to reach their full potential as leaders? There are, there are quite a number of progress over the years. Flexible working hours, remote working arrangements, and the option to return gradually back to work after maternity leave. All these make a big difference to working mothers. Hong Kong companies are increasingly issuing such policies. And this is very, very good news. But to make these policies really effective, companies also need to ensure they are actually implemented. This has a lot to do with the culture that the management teams create. Women need to feel it is not just acceptable, but positively encouraged for them to actually take advantage of flexible hours, for example, or remote work from home or something. Otherwise, these policies can remain a mere token. Looking ahead, employers can and should be more flexible and creative in their approach to helping women pursue their careers. And they need not worry, necessarily, that any flexibility will be exploited. It certainly hasn't been in my own experience from what I have seen. Indeed, I have seen many cases in which women have never forgotten the flexibility shown to them by an employer when they needed it, and in which they have repaid this commitment very handsomely. As we transition towards greater gender diversity in the workplace, I think there can be some value in quotas and self-imposed targets to ensure a certain proportion of female representation, at least at very early stages. Indeed, my colleague, Antonio Simos in the UK, um, he's made the news last week when he said that HSBC's UK business has committed to appointing women to 50% of its senior management roles. Antonio said, it's completely unacceptable that this day and age, in 2015, women are still significantly underrepresented at a senior management level across the financial services industry. I agree completely and share his commitment to changing this. Ultimately though, we all want a world in which candidates are hired and promoted purely on ability, performance and track record. Gender should not be a criterion. So whilst there is much that employers can and should do to support women in the workplace, I think it is crucial that women themselves play their part to, to the full. Employers can construct a ladder, but it is absolutely up to us to climb that ladder. Finally, my advice to all the women here is, don't be afraid to share your thoughts, to ask and to be vocal. Back up your points, or the points you want to make in business meetings with strong objective research and factual data. And talk to as many stakeholders as possible along the way. Stay positive. 
When confronted with obstacles, keep a cool mind and don't take things too personally. Find a space for yourself away from work that lets you step back from issues and give yourself a bit of a wider perspective. Most importantly, believe in yourself. Remind yourself that you are or you have the same abilities as the gentleman across the table from you in the business meeting. And in the interest of true equality, I think that is pretty good advice for men as well. Thank you indeed. <laughs> <laughs>